Hello, and welcome to the Dialog System for Unity. To start, import the Dialog System using the Package Manager window. In this quick start tutorial, we'll write a conversation and play it. In subsequent tutorials, you'll learn how to customize the Dialog System's UIs, handle conditional logic, do more advanced interaction, and much more. After importing, the Dialog System will ask a few questions about your input system. Answer them as appropriate for your project. The Welcome window gives you access to commonly used operations and lets you enable optional features. If you're making a 2D game, you must tick the Physics 2D checkbox. You can turn off the Welcome window when you no longer need it. Now, create an empty scene, then drag the Dialog Manager prefab from Plugins, Pixel Crushers, Dialog System, Prefabs into your scene. Next to the Initial Database field, click the Create button to create a new Dialog database. Click on the Conversations tab. Click Plus to create a new conversation. Right-click on the Start node and select Create Child node. Select the node and in the Inspector enter Hello in the Dialog text field. You can also double-click the node itself to enter text directly on it. Right-click this node and select Create Child node again. Enter Goodbye. The gray node is an NPC's dialog text, and the blue node is the player's response. By default, the dialog system will show player nodes in response menus. If you want to show single player responses as subtitles, instead of requiring the player to click a response button, on the Dialog Manager, untick Display Settings, Input Settings, Always Force Response Menu, and in Subtitle Settings, tick Show PC Subtitles During Line. You can add NPC and player actors in the Actors section, but for now we'll just use the defaults. The dialog editor is packed with useful features such as the ability to show and hide all kinds of information, auto-arrange conversation trees, create draggable groups, and more. You can also import content from many other sources such as Artisy Draft, Arcweave, Chatmapper, Twine, and Yarn. Next, create an empty game object named Player. Then create a cube that we'll name NPC. Make sure the cube is positioned at 000 so the camera can see it. Add a dialog system trigger component. You can also start conversations from C-sharp code and visual scripting integrations, but the dialog system trigger is a convenient way to do it. Select Add Action, Start Conversation. Select our newly created conversation. Assign the Player Game object to the Conversation Actor field and the NPC to the Conversation Conversant. Then change the trigger dropdown to On Start And let's test this out now. You'll see in the console that the dialog system added an event system to the scene at runtime since it doesn't have one, and Unity requires an event system for UI interaction. To get rid of this warning, you can add an event system to the scene. Next, we'll set up the triggering system, which is an optional feature, but useful for setting up all kinds of interactions. Change the trigger dropdown back to on use and add a usable component. Set max use distance to 30 because we're going to raycast from the camera, which is more than five units away. Inspect the player and add a selector component. Change Select At to Mouse Position and Play.
When you mouse over the cube, the selector detects it. If you right-click with the mouse or press the spacebar, it will start the conversation. If the selector's UI is still visible during the conversation, to remedy that, add a Dialog System Events component to the player. Configure the On Conversation Start event to disable the selector component, and On Conversation End to re-enable it. Now, when we play, the selector will disappear when the conversation is running. That's not all you can do with the dialogue system. You can configure dialogue system events to disable player control during conversations, configure barks and quests, completely customize the UI, add voiceover, and much more. Before we finish this video, I recommend dragging the Dialog Manager instance in the scene into the project view to create a prefab variant. This way, your customizations on the prefab variant won't be overwritten if you update the dialog system. You can add instances of this prefab variant to any of your scenes to be able to playtest those scenes directly in the Unity editor. And that's it for the quick start tutorial. Thanks for watching.